Hey folks, this is Book Hall and your host, Michael Shagov. So the year of 2021 is steadily coming to an end and with it, the ambitious reading plans. So just a couple of statistics before we dive in. This year I started reading 40 books. I managed to finish 28 and uh, 12 books I dropped. Those 12, I believe they deserve uh, a special episode of the books that couldn't get my undivided attention. Or, to put it another way, genuinely sucked. Out of those 28 books that I read, I selected a list of top 10, which I personally find outstanding, and I hope you will find too. But before we dive in, let me give you a quick disclaimer. So first of all, um, I'll be reviewing books that were published around 2019-2021, so relatively fresh. I sincerely hope that I could bring you more fresh books, but come on guys, uh, <laughs> I have a full-time job and a life. Well, I guess I probably should cut that out. The second disclaimer, since the past year was mostly focused on personal growth, a fair share of the books I'll be reviewing would be non-fiction. However, there are a few notable fiction books that I would also add in a review, so bear with me. Besides, there is one additional thing that I would like to note is every year has a specific theme to it. And the key theme for my personal reading during 2021 was flexibility. <laughs> it's about uh, avoiding rigidity in thoughts and beliefs. And most of the books that I picked, whether consciously or unconsciously, revolve around that subject. You will get what I mean once we dive deeper. But, come on guys and girls, uh, and all the non-binaries who are currently listening to this episode, fasten your seatbelts, prepare your drinks, whatever you fancy, and let's get it on. Number 10 is James Nestor and a book called Breath. Um, when I first set my eyes on this book, my initial reaction was that how can you write a book about such a straightforward topic? What is there even to write about, unless this is a medical textbook? How wrong I really was. In reality, uh, this is a fascinating read on how breathing can actually transform your life and unlock your full potential. And it is written from a truly personal perspective with a lot of scientific insight. I would say it's a definite must read. Book number nine, Andrew Steele and Ageless. I would say it is incredible deep dive into the biology of aging and overview of prospective treatments of aging as a disease. Some contemporary thinkers claim it is a disease and are actively searching for strategies to mitigate it. Anyways, there's a long way to go and to get there. Uh, I would say that it was not as moving, not as personal as uh, Lifespan by David Sinclair, which I enjoyed. Uh, although this book has its own advantages. It puts the biology of aging in a proper context and it provides a deeper and more systematic uh, foundation of understanding uh, all the ins and outs of this subject on a molecular level and it can be read by a newbie. Number eight, which is Mitch Album, The Stranger in a Light Boat, the first fiction to pop up in this list. The premise of the book is that multiple survivors from a luxury lifeboat crash. They drift along in a life raft and suddenly a stranger pops out, out of the waves. He claims to be God. And if they want to survive, they have to believe in him. This is a, quite an interesting premise. And uh, I would say this book is a real page turner mystery with a truly satisfying resolution. Do not expect a great novel out of this book, but you will get your fair share of entertainment and the author is going to challenge you. Book number seven is David Mitchell, Utopia Avenue. It is a beautifully written homage to the swinging 60s. A well-crafted story about a fictional band, uh, which is called Utopia Avenue. Uh, I would say it starts steadily. It lags a little bit in the middle, drags on and there, and uh, really delivers by the end. And um, if names like Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Brian Jones ring a bell, well, this book is definitely for you. Number six, Nedra Glover Tawab. The book is called Set Boundaries, Find Peace. It is a deceptively simple book on personal boundaries. 
If you read it thoroughly, though, and uh, apply all the exercises that the author provides, you just save yourself months or maybe even years in therapy. Um, I would say it's really well written, it has great insight and a very nice structure. It's one of the best psychological books that I've read this year and uh, by far one of the best books on topics of boundaries. Number five is split between two authors. First author is uh, Morgan Housel and his Psychology of Money, and the second author is Ramit Sehti and uh, his book I Will Teach You to Be Rich. I decided to put them together not only because they tackle the same subject but because they complement each other really nicely. One book approaches the subject from a psychology perspective. How do you save, how do you consume and how do you earn money in general? And another book provides you a practical and no bullshit system on how can you actually generate wealth. Uh, basically, these are the only two books on everyday money management that I would recommend you should ever read. Number four, it's uh, Rahul Jangyal, and uh, the book is called Lessons from a Brain Surgeon. This is an amazing and at times shockingly candid book about the intricacies of the brain. No theoretical BS on brain's anatomy that you probably read a thousand times. This book is filled with practical wisdom that you can start applying immediately. Like what to eat, how to breathe, how to be more creative, or even which drugs to take and which to avoid. And a quick disclaimer, caffeine is also a drug. Okay, it's getting hotter now and we are slowly reaching our top three leaders. <sighs> Number three is Robert Kolker in his book Hidden Valley Road. This is an insane book about insanity in its literal form. It's an extraordinary story of a family of 12 children, six of whom were eventually diagnosed with schizophrenia. Not only it is an intimate portrait of an American family, but it is also a great book that paints a bigger historical context about the attitudes and the research of the disorder in the past century. A must read. Number two, David Epstein and the book Range. This is a stereotype shattering book that scientifically proves the benefits of being a generalist. The author challenges us by asking, like, what is more beneficial, sticking to one specialized path, even if you have grown it, or trying a variety of new things and choosing one that is more satisfying to you. The generalist thesis is proven by data from the variety of fields, ranging from sports to business management. Definitely a must read. The number one book, Think Again by Adam Grant. I would say it is an amazing read and a must buy book about the rigidity of thought in general and how people should strive to develop a rethinking skill. Yes, ability to rethink your past ideas is a skill, claims the author, and provides a very specific preacher, prosecutor, politician and a scientist walk into the bar framework to not only interpersonal communication, group communication, company culture, but expand it beyond. And not only will it challenge and expand your mind, but it is a really entertaining read, filled with real-life stories and insight. So I definitely urge you to read this one. But anyways, read those 10 and your life would never be the same. Hope you will enjoy your holidays.